Hello kind brothers and sisters. For those of you new to this page, in this videos we're discussing about the nature, structure and philosophy of the Dreamspell calendar based on the ancient Mayan wisdom and their calendar system. And because a calendar represents a measuring unit for time, we cannot discuss about a calendar without first discussing about the essence of time. And this is exactly what we'll be doing in this video. I've kind of been touching this topic throughout my videos already, but I read a really cool book by world-renowned physicist Carlo Rovelli called The Order of Time that inspired me to make this video. So what is time? This is the question I always start my workshops with and I love the answers I get because time is such a personal thing. We tend to think of time as something external to our being, very simple and basic, that flows continuously and independently from everything else, from past to future, measured by the ticking of the clock and the calendar. But here's a question. Do we exist in time or does time exist within us? Is time relative based on our perception of it? For example, time spent in line at the airport when your flight got delayed could seem like an eternity, while time spent in the arms of the person you love go by in an instant. The time experienced by an indigenous person in nature is completely different than the time experienced by a Wall Street businessman. Time also is experienced differently by people who observe themselves in a work that is beyond them, such as artists, healers, musicians, and writers. Also, did you notice that the more present you are, the more differently time flows? It expands. For every moving object, time passes faster than for an object which stands still, for which time expands. For moving objects, time contracts. And also, did you know that Time passes faster in the mountains than it does at sea level, and this is a fact measured by scientists. Here's the thing. The idea that there is a well-defined now that exists throughout the universe is an illusion, a projection of our own experience of time. There isn't only one single time. There are, in fact, a lot of different times. We have a different time for every point in space. Time has a different rhythm in different places and the world is the interweaving of dances attuned to different rhythms. We haven't been able to understand the true nature of time because our consciousness and our mind has been altered by living attuned to the artificial 1260 timing frequency. Time isn't a straight line or an arrow. It's a never-ending spiral. Time is a frequency, the universal frequency of synchronization. And by the way, the idea to synchronize clocks with one another is more modern than you think. Each village and city had a sundial which registered the moment when the sun was at noon and the clock on the bell tower was adjusted based on it. And because the sun is at noon in different parts of the world at different times, each city and village had their own time living inside their own time bubble. In the 19th century, the arise of telegraph and trains and industrialization gives birth to the need of synchronizing clocks between cities. And in 8083 came the idea of dividing the world according to time zones. Nowadays, we are at the mercy of the ticking of the clock. Sure, sundials and hourglasses and water clocks existed in the ancient times before the modern clock, but they didn't play the cruel role that clocks nowadays have in the way we organize our time. Time has become the system which measures our, the productivity based on which we get paid. By tricking humans to sell their time to earn money, humanity was enslaved and brought to its present state of insanity. Time has become something external to ourselves, a materialistic concept promoted by the globalist society under slogans such as time is money. For millennia before clocks, our way of measuring the passing of time was through the alternation of day and night. This cyclical rhythm of day followed by night also regulates the um, life and activity of plants and animals. And we have nocturnal and diurnal beings in nature. Humans being mostly diurnal, although with nowadays technology most of us are becoming night owls, but ultimately humans function at their optimum capacity during daytime. Our whole inner mechanism follows this diurnal rhythm. Living mechanisms in general are full of inner clocks, molecular, uh, neural, hormonal, chemical. This alternation between day and night is one of our main sources of our idea of time, 
night follows day, day follows night, and the cycle never ends. In ancient times, in cultures such as the Mayans, time represented the counting of days. That's actually what the word Tolkien means, the counting of days, not the counting of minutes and seconds with a clock. And ultimately, this is how we have understood time, by counting the ways in which things change. We count the days, the um, years, the seasons, the cycles of the moon. As Aristotle said, time is the measurement of change. Things constantly change. But in the Newtonian model of time, which is at the base of society's current idea of time, there is a time that flows independently from everything else. It presumes that time exists as an independent entity that runs in a uniform and imperturbable way, like an arrow going from A to B. This indicates to us that time is independent of the movement of things. Clocks are actually the way through which we seek to follow this uniform and independent flow of time. But this idea of a time that is independent from things is actually an idea of Newton's. It's in no way an ancient intuition of humanity who, on the contrary, as we see from Aristotle's quote, they were much more connected with the understanding of the deeper meaning of time. It's not to say that Newton was wrong in saying that there is indeed something beyond the things that we see moving and changing, but it's wrong to think that time is independent from things. After all, when and where are always referred to as being in relationship to something. And nowadays, thanks to quantum physics, we know how important of a role the observer plays. And here's another very interesting thing to consider. There are two ways in which we can look at the world. We can see it as being made out of things, people, substances, entities, things that are. Or we can see it as being made out of events, experiences, um, happenings, something that occurs, something that doesn't last, something impermanent in time. The difference between things and events is that things seem to have a longer um, persistence throughout time, but events have a more limited duration. A relationship, a family, a war are not things, they're a sequence of events and experiences. A storm is not a thing, it's the collection of occurrences. A wave isn't a thing, it's the movement of water. A crystal is not a crystal, but the result of different processes in nature. A cup is not a cup, it's the process of visualizing, shaping and painting that cup. A human being is not a thing. It's the summing up of all of the experiences that he or she has ever had. In the end, the study of time does nothing but return us to ourselves. We must never lose track of the fact that all our experience of the world comes from within. And in the end, time represents the dimension of our minds. Our brain has the ability to create extensive maps of past events, which produces the sensation that the past is determined. The absence of any traces of the future makes us feel as if the future is open. Our brain creates bridges between past, present, and future. Mainly, our brain is a mechanism for interpreting past events so that it can use them to act in the present and predict the future. And this goes from the very small to the very big, from learning not to touch a burning flame because it will burn us, to learning to stay away from toxic people in relationships. Our present reality is full of the traces of our past experiences. We are the narratives of ourselves. So to understand ourselves, we need to reflect on time. And to understand time, we need to reflect on ourselves. The passing of time is above anything else internal. That is why our current way of perceiving time as something external to our being does so much damage to our inner world. Time represents the traces left in our brain by the past. It is the source of our identity, of our happiness, and of our suffering. The mystery of time interacts very intimately with the mystery of our own personal identity, 
Thus, to understand our own nature more deeply, we need to understand time more deeply. And right now, there is a time of great change happening on Earth, and this has everything to do with us shifting time frequencies, and through this process, we can rewire our minds. Going from this standardized, mechanized, external, and linear way of looking at time to the more cyclical, synchronized, internal, and harmonized frequency of time. All the values, customs, and norms of a country, a culture, and a civilization are embedded in the calendar system they use. The Gregorian calendar was the anchoring of the time of globalization. It was the calendar of the Roman Empire and the Catholic Church. So now, it's time for us to return to nature, to return to our inner nature, and to connect with a calendar system that is synchronized with the cycles of nature itself and the cycles of the universe. Time is not something happening outside of us, the never-ending ticking of the clock. Time is something happening within. Ultimately, we are time. We are this space created by the traces of memory left inside the connection between our neurons. We are memory. We are imagination. We are artists. Painting the masterpiece of our life on time's canvas. So, I'd really recommend you to read the book The Order of Time by Carlo Rovelli. It's a really awesome book. And for those of you who have any questions about the 30 moon calendar or the Tolkien or for decoding your galactic signature and unraveling the gifts that you carry as well as your challenges, you can feel free to either send me a message on Facebook or on my email. Until the next time, wishing you a very grounded day. In La Cache.